It's April 28th, and I just got my seeds. It's about 45 degrees and a little drizzly. Thought I'd do a little update. Got the 7140 back. It was at the dealer getting repaired. Uh, there there's several problems with it. The biggest one was the uh, rocker shaft seals and the cylinder that raise and lower the three-point hitch. All had to be tore apart. They spent about 20 hours doing that and they fixed the fuel uh, fuel gauge and a couple other things, some SCVs. This is the new rock rake. Tried to buy a used one at auction. They're like three quarters of the price of new. And these things aren't cheap. But I got it up here and this is in the field position. And I've been playing around with it the last couple of days. I'm hoping between this and the rock picker, I gotta use one of them at auction. That I can um, really cut down on. There's about 40 acres of uh, rocks that I gotta pick almost every year. So basically this goes along in a 15 foot wide swath and leaves a wind row of the, uh, they say two to 18 inch rocks after cultivating, after disking, they should be on the surface and this will leave them in a wind row. You can kind of see where the tire tracks were. I, I used a loader to put the seeds in the shed out of the rain. I had nine pallets. Only one had a hole in it. Somewhere it got punctured with a uh, fork, but you can see on my tire tracks, so there's some weed on the ground there. So we'll come in here and I'll show you. I've got a moisture problem in this shed. I need to put a drain tile all along the outside wall out there. Try to intercept some of this water, because i got standing water in this corner, and I think it gets under the slab, you can see. I don't know if it'll show up on the video, but the discoloration, so there's quite a bit of moisture. It seeps into here, and I'm trying to keep the humidity down. So I got fans going on these seeds. A couple fans down there. So you're looking at wheat, bowls, spring wheat, five pallets, three pallets of soybeans, and one pallet of corn. And I got a little bit of buckwheat. One bag of buckwheat, one bag of sunflowers. I'm going to try it out as a test, see how that goes. I'll just come over here and show you this too. Try to get everything crammed in here. I don't want to say I'm paranoid about the keeping my equipment out of the water, but it always seems to be failing. The least I can do as long as I got the space um, is get it under. Oh, let's crawl over here. Maybe we can crawl over here. Make an adventurous video. People, somebody asked me why I don't edit my videos. My desktop so old it won't let me use the editing software from YouTube so I'm not buying a new computer just to do that over here on the planter I noticed when I was moving it around both of the main lift cylinders took that one out uh, the lift cylinders have bad seals on them you kind of see the crud down in there where it was leaking and man to get this pin if you ever had to take that pin out that holds the bottom of the uh, the rod on the cylinder, I don't know how you get that thing out of there. It's like they put it in there when they were fat. I don't know, it'd be a bear. Anyway, these two cylinders are kind of okay, that cylinder, that cylinder. But this other lift cylinder has got a little bit of a leak at the bottom too, so I, I didn't catch it in time. But I took it out and took it up to deer. They're going to rebuild it. 8100 seems to be pretty good. It's got a hitch position, position sensor fault code that I don't think it's a broken wire. I can't diagnose it. Even if I could, I can't recalibrate it without software. So Ronnie's gonna have to come out here from Deer and, and fix that. Um, this needed a new battery, 400 bucks this spring. But it's in, it, it had squirrels nesting in it and I got them cleaned out and they didn't chew any wires, I don't think. Uh, let's see, I got the drill all greased up. Um, I checked all the gauge wheels and everything on that. I got some life left in my disc openers and my gauge wheels need to be replaced, but there's only all the bearings. I replaced three or four bearings and some of the gauge wheels that were loose. There's one that's a little bit loose, but I think another project for this spring or not this spring, this summer, is going to be replacing all these gauge wheels. 
because um, I don't know if it'll show up, but you know, about half of them are really ratty like that, where the rubber's starting to crack and come apart. Anyway, I got stuff crammed in here. It's supposed to rain, snow the next two or three days. Yeah, you see the water comes in here. The pitch on this, it, it's basically a big bathtub in there. Started long before I got here, but the idea would be to put a, uh, dig a trench all along here, and then uh, try to get this water to run off. You can see it gets really mushy down in here. So I got the standing water here and like I said earlier I think it just goes right under the slab or it just it just sits under the slab you know because that's the creeks back back there but all in all it's um, it's shaping up uh, the next thing I'll do I'll get the disc out it's out in that shed out there and hook it to 7140 once this dries out a little bit here there's 75 acres that's getting spring wheat and they've still got to put turkey litter on it too so I'm trying to hoping they can do it while I um, before I disc it, or right after I disc it, before I drill it, but if they can't get here in time, I'm gonna go ahead and drill the wheat. They're gonna to have to put it on over, and then I'm gonna be tying weeding this wheat pre and post emergence, because I know I'm gonna have a lot of uh, weed pressure from all the weeds I had last year in the soybeans. Well, that's an update for what it's worth. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.